thank you for turning in to handle your business with Bobby Dino. I am here with a man that I met off of Twitter. His handle's Black Basket, right? Is it? Is that right? Like How Bastiat, you say it? Basket. Like the, uh, French philosopher. Oh, Basket. Okay. See, yeah, th yeah. that's my that's my undereducated butt. No, uh, <laughs> his name's Roy, and Roy, why don't you tell us who you are and and what it is you do? Hi everyone, my name is uh, Roy Williamson. Uh, I'm currently a police officer. My assignment, uh, one of my duties is uh, SWAT, uh, Special Weapons and Tactics. I'm also a community police officer where I do things where I interact with the community and things like that. So I've been doing that cool, for about man. 14 years. And are, are you allowed to say where, or do you gotta keep that part? I keep that part. Uh... <laughs> uh, uh, okay, under wraps. Okay, cool. Yeah. So just so you know, that's, uh, under wraps. Yeah. No, um, that, that's pretty, that's pretty intense, man, because not only do you have this community aspect, right? Uh, like you said, and I kind of understand or familiar with what a community officer does, but maybe if you want to kind of dive into that a little bit, or just maybe explain yeah. like, like what is it that you do with that? Yeah. Well, that position is very unique. I deal with, I deal with a lot of, uh, political issues within the city, uh, and also part of my job is to connect with uh, underprivileged youth. Uh, I go to after school programs, I do a midnight basketball program, uh, oh, cool. I deal with community issues, things that are kind of unconventional. I work with a lot of business owners trying to help them solve problems or they have security issues like they, how to uh, like tidy up their property to stop you know, crime and uh, things like that. So that's a cool aspect and also to pair it with uh i'm also on the swat team as an extra duty sometimes you know you go from dealing with the community to stew talking to kids and now we have a call out and we have to go <laughs> yeah and that's that's what i was kind of tripping on right there because i could see being um and i don't want to say a beat cop because that's not yeah. the, but just you know a guy that's that's in a car and and a uniform but you, you've got this position to where you're dealing, like you said, with kids, with business owners. And then you can get this call to where it's like, hey, gear up, we're rolling out into some real shit right now. Yeah, yeah. Have you ever had an instance to where, let's say you were dealing with someone or, or having some type of uh, communication or relationship with someone in the community officer aspect and gotten a call from the SWAT aspect that may be involved or has, have the two ever crossed paths like that or, or are they usually pretty, pretty kind of compartmentalized? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes they're separated, but I, like I deal with kids a lot. So sometimes you don't know the full story behind the kids at the after school program. So you may deal with them and I play basketball with them. And then next thing you know, it's some type of domestic situation mm. that I will have to respond to. And you like, you know. <laughs> Yes, and you of. see a kid that you've worked with or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a bummer. Yeah, that's a bummer. With with uh, working with SWAT, special weapons and tactics, and I know people. It's like I explain it and you explain it, but there's been movies and everybody watches yeah. TV. It's like people pretty much have a understanding of what SWAT is. How how long have you done that position for? Uh, I've done it off and on for about. Four or five years. Oh, okay. Yeah. I so did it before you, I stopped, you, went back and did it. Yeah. Okay, so you've rolled out on some stuff. Like yeah, you've, yeah. You've been in the action. Okay. Doing that, and here's what I'm not going to ask. Okay. I get a lot of questions from where I come from, and I I don't think people understand that they're being rude sometimes, but they'll be like. What's the craziest shit you ever yeah. saw? Dog? <laughs> and it's like, and it's like, um, it's almost kind of an asshole question, you know. I mean, <laughs> you don't want to. You wouldn't go up to, you know, someone that was like the, like a like a victim, you know, of a crime, and been like, hey, what was the craziest thing that you saw with it, you know? Because it's it's, you don't want to bring somebody back to that point, right? Yeah. So I'm not going to ask that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but what what I what I will ask is when you go out on these calls 
do they tend to be, because I know that SWAT's not going to be called for routine stuff. The, something's already got to be happening for them to come. Oh, yeah. Okay. In your experience, do situations tend to resolve more peacefully when SWAT comes, or do they tend to deteriorate and you have to act when you guys show up? Usually, usually for the most part, they kind of resolve themselves because we always say time is on our side. It's only rare uh, when uh, we're forced to act. And luckily, I, I had, for whatever reason, I've never been around when it happened. Uh, I can't say this, the area where I work, we were involved in December 2nd, the terror attacks at the, uh, the, the county building. I wasn't there, but a situation like that, when you have terrorists go inside of a county building, they start blowing stuff up and shooting people. There's no time to, you, you have to just go in. And luckily for me in the States, I haven't been in that type of, uh, that type of situation. But most of the time it's like, you're surrounded around the house. We have time, you know, we have our, our ways to <laughs> manipulate the situation. But uh, right. either, either way it's dangerous. Anytime you go inside someone else's house, and they know the layout, yeah. they know where everything's at. And you know, no matter how much we train and the tactics we have, it's, it's always, you know, people can say they're not scared, but we're scared, we're just brave enough to fight through the fear and continue right. to push because someone has to do it. That's kind of how we say it. It's like, if not us, then who? That's kind of the mentality right. we have. And for the people that are watching, okay, I agree with what Roy says, and I'm pretty sure that anybody that's been through any type of stuff will tell you uh there's fear mm -hmm. there's there's it's not like if you're not afraid something's wrong yeah. that's that's <laughs> uh those are almost kind of like the people you don't want to be in a situation yeah. with you know uh mm -hmm. the ones that that don't have that fear of death right but when you're in a situation like that there's no problem with being afraid and even admitting fear like it the, the thing that you have to do is you have to fight through it you have to conquer your fear instead of letting fear conquer you. And when you talk about who heroes are or who the brave or great guys are, it's the people that are able to do that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. When, when you, I mean, obviously you're not going to say anything bad about the crew or nothing like that. When you are involved with, with uh policing okay because i know that this is going to come up with with people that are watching oh yeah do you think that for the majority the people that you're around and, and your fellow officers and all that like that it's a good system and and they're great people or do you have have you ever seen or, or had to deal with maybe guys that you work with that you were just like oh man i'd rather not work with this guy oh of course the, the thing about police is up uh, like we we like any organization, especially us. We're a brotherhood, so we do <laughs> stick together. But there are people that we know who are issues. The problem is, it's really hard to get rid of us when 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 it happens. We're we're very secure in our job. But yeah, we and we know who's who in the zoo. You know, we go like oh, I don't right. know this guy. That guy is cool. She's cool. She's cool. That guy I don't know about. But and, and at the end of the day, we're still gonna you know, protect each other, it's, especially right there in the moment. Now, there may be a situation oh, sure. when, when we go back to the locker room, if I have an issue with the way you handle things, and I'm going to confront you, whether it's dealing with uh, the public. I've done it before. You said, yeah, we go through it and we get back to the locker room. Hey, dude, I don't like the way you talk to that person, blah, blah, blah. And so, so it, it happens. A lot of people don't know that. You know, we're not, I'm not going to get into specifics, but yeah, we do, we sure. do have our checks and balances where we check each other, just like any any type of organization. We're not going to do it on the streets, you know? Yeah, you, you, that's something, you, like you said, you handle it in the locker room, you handle mm -hmm. it in private. And really, that's how any organization should be. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to be checking your fellow, whether you're the boss and it's employees or whether it's your partners or whatever like that. It's a sign of weakness if you start arguing and getting right. at each other in front of whoever, you know, that, yeah. then you know that there's, there's a, here's the thing about cons and, and for you guys that are watching, pay attention. The reason why they're called convicts or one of the reasons mm -hmm. why is because they're really good at figuring out what weaknesses are. Exactly. They're really good at, at figuring out what tells and which whatever. This is what I tell you guys, right? So showing that weakness or showing that whatever 
if somebody has that manipulation, that convict in them or whatever, they'll jump on that. Yeah. They'll try and play it. Yeah. Exactly. Um, what do you think, or do you feel like the, the turnover rate in being a police officer, how does, how does that work in your experience? Like, do a lot of people get in and, and see like, oh, this isn't for me, and they take off, or, or do most, when they come in, they're like, I'm here for the long haul? Yeah, it, well, it may be different. I know everything is different in different regions, but in California, since uh, we, we make decent money out here mm -hmm. compared to the cause of living, most people get into the job, they stay. But you do see people that when they start, we, I saw a few young people start, and they kind of realize, like, hey, this isn't for me. Like you said, the con aspect. You know, I work the jail, yeah. so I kind of understand how the whole, the con aspect worked. And they'll go to the streets and, you know, it's somebody that went to college, they got a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, and they go out to the streets and they'll tell somebody, hey, do this, and they'll buck up to them. You can see it in their eye, like, they don't have it, you know. And then yeah. They, yeah. And then they may, you know, this ain't for me, even send them a letter of resignation. But most people, for the most part, they get in it and uh, they stay in it and, uh, you know, different things happen. Some people take off in their career, some people don't. And there's a lot of internal politics depending on the attitude, but most, most people stay, most people stay in the yeah. yeah. I've heard, and this was a while back. I don't know if it's, if it's true, but I've heard um, different places like, uh, I don't know if it was Huntington beach or, or uh, I forget which department it was, but they were saying like, they're the best paid cops in the world. That, that California has like some of the highest paid police officers around. And I know that the union has got to be pretty great. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's like, I can't imagine why a lot of people would want to leave once you get in, into a situation like that. Yeah, yeah, most people, most people stay from, you know, it may be different in different parts of the country because I know some places they don't, cops don't make a lot of money or a decent money, so it may be. Right. I'll do this for a couple of years and then go do something else. Yeah, you know, that's funny because uh, I, I did this tweet one time about uh, great jobs that you can have without an education. And I put correctional officer, police officer, fireman were on there. Because in my mind, I'm thinking like LA County Fire Department, oh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, correct California correctional officer, you know, to where these dudes are just, they're in the triple figures there. Right. I mean, excuse me, the, the six digits, you know, rather, uh, to where they're making a lot of money. And I'll have these people respond to me that are like, I don't know, in Oklahoma or somewhere else. And they're just like, <laughs> what are you talking about? A cop or a firefighter is a good job. That's a shit job. You know what I'm like? Yeah. They make like 30 kids. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, and that's, that's pretty crazy when you think about that. If, if you were, let's say in, in one of those States, right. What they make knowing that they make, a lot less than what the standard is out here for California. Is that, a, would you still want to pursue that as a career? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. Probably so there, not. yeah, there, there is a level to, you know, I mean, obviously you, you have to do the balance to where it's like, yeah. Hey, I want to make money, you know, and I'm mm. risking my life. So it's like, I gotta be able to kind of like justify what's worth it. Yeah. You have to balance it. Cause, uh, it may be fun, so it's probably a situation that's why guys get in and they do probably four or five years because that's kind of around the time when the, uh, the fun starts to wear off, you know? Yeah. You know, you, you know you're not like bad boys, too. You know, you're like, oh, man, this is fun. And you're like, four or five years, you're like, man, working graveyard sucks. You know, going to court in the, yeah. morning, going to court in the morning out the graveyard sucks, you know? So you're like, man, I, and I'm not making any money. So you're like, it's time to go do something else. So that's why I, I got buddies in different states from the military, and they usually – they'll be a cop for four or five years and then they'll go do something else. It's pretty common. Gotcha. Now we were talking earlier, you were, you were in the Iraq war. Yes. Yes. I was, was it desert storm or, or which no, I was one was it? Uh, Operation Iraqi freedom. The one in 03. Oh, okay. When we invaded. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And were you, are you, are you allowed to say what you did or what your yes, job I'm was totally, while you were over yeah, there? I'm totally out now. Yeah, so uh, I joined, I think I joined, uh, I think I joined a 99, 
Uh, okay. Me, a little bit about me. I'm from. I'm originally from Chicago. Spent a little time in Alabama. I'm from the west side of Chicago, which is probably one of the most oh, <laughs> notorious dang. areas uh, yeah. in Chicago. Uh, and so that's why. Yeah. I so play. nothing out here in California is phasing you at all, man. You're just, no. like, <laughs> <laughs> you're just like you guys are playing, man. Knock it off. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, so, and that's the reason why I joined the military. So I joined the military and I was standing there. I wanted to do like cool stuff. My mom was like, no, he's going to work with computers. So I was like, all right, sign me up, logistics. Well, he put me in a cab unit, so. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, okay, so, so. I was in a third MC. So you were, oh man, that that's, now, but you, you weren't going on, were you going on like house sweeps and missions and stuff like that? Or were you? No. No, no well, nothing real crazy, right? No, but it, yeah. it, it still gets a little it still gets a little crazy because you had to go on missions. So like uh my unit, we had the tanks, the armored vehicles and the in the helicopters, the Apaches. So we had to go on missions to get like engines or whatever. So one of our tanks got blown up or engine was bad. And so we would hop on these yeah. missions, you'd be like two hundred bees and we'd just drive through the middle of Baghdad. And it's <laughs> you know, and it, it worked out. That's all I'm saying. I, I got lucky. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you know what's crazy yeah, is, oh yeah, yeah, things, it tripped me out when I was watching, because I'd see like the live leak videos, and I'd see like different stuff of what was going on over there, and and I'm thinking to myself, Jesus, these guys got to have balls of steel going through these different, because the houses o over there aren't set up like over here. No. I mean, over here, you have like, you know, a house, a yard, it's all like basically the same type of you know, a lot. And it's very, to where over there, it's just up and down and inside and outside to where, oh my gosh, man. Did you ever get that feeling or ever, ever get to a point where you were over there to where like, oh man, I could die right now. Like, like something can happen right now. I just, oh, yeah. like, was there ever that type of uh, situation to where you were in fear for your life? Oh yeah. That's what I'm saying. I, some people get lucky. I was one of the lucky ones. I've been in some situations where it, like I said, it was two of us. We're in the middle of downtown Baghdad. And it's like New York City, like Times Square. And there's people everywhere. There's people on top of, you know, overpasses. And you're like, man, I'm about to get shot right now, dude. <laughs> you know, or somebody's going to do a roadside bomb, and just blow me up. And it's just yeah. two vehicles. But it worked out. And we went back to the, you know, Biop uh, International Airport and delivered the goods. And it was, but it, 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 that's, that's the way it is. Or uh, a lot of times, even if the guy's on base, I remember being on base and they would just launch mortars on the base like all day. The Iraqi, just, just all day, you know. And, you know. Just, and, and, but they aren't landing in the base. Are they they just, were landing in the base, but they weren't very good. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so a, lot, a lot of the salty soldiers and, and Marines and stuff, we just walk around. We, we wouldn't even get in the bunker, you know. You just walk around. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> it was pretty crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, that is. Uh, that, uh, there's kind of that not to compare prison to to the military but there's there's kind of a similar aspect to where you're walking around and you're in this situation and like let's say you know something can happen or whatever and you're just like uh eh, whatever like if it happens it happens yeah, you know like exactly. you're, you're just you, you just stop caring as much uh yeah. you just know like it's it's like a 50-50 it's it's either a yes or a no my wife was was from back now she's not she's not arabic she's not uh she's armenian okay but because of what happened with the with the story uh or i don't even know if i'm saying that word right but but when the stuff happened with the turks and all that yeah, Armenian her family yeah right her her family wound up in, in baghdad in iraq oh. and that's where she was born yeah she, and they've told me uh, different little stories from back then, right? Because this is back in the 70s yeah. uh, to where, and her older brothers and sisters, you know, uh, to where I'm just like, oh, whoa, man, yeah. that's that's nuts, you know? Do you have any of those kind of feelings or stories from when you were over there, or like stuff that you saw that, not not like, you know, bad stuff, like, but but just maybe custom type stuff or something to where you were just like, oh, this is some weird, like, it ain't like this in America, like anything like that. Yeah, like uh, one of them was uh, the men, like the best friends over there, the men, they hold hands. You know, for, really? yeah, for America, that's pretty, 
that's pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's like that's one of the customs. And uh, like they'll walk down the street. Yeah, they walk down the street holding hands. That's a, that's a part of that's a part of that custom. You know, just just wow. different, just crazy kind of things. Like I remember, like uh, if you had your MVGs on at night, you could catch somebody maybe you know having relations with the <laughs> with the <a> mule. <laughs> oh <laughs> wow! Yeah, crazy stuff like that. You know. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. I, I've heard. I heard. Uh, it was one of the things I, I think my wife told me or my my wife's sister, but they'd say, you know how they have like the the robes or the yeah yeah the garments on, you know, I don't even know what, what the right word is for those clothes, but he said they'd be standing there and, and they'd like, let's say one of them would have to go to the bathroom or something. They just lift up the robes and on the side of the, <laughs> oh, and then they clean themselves off with their, you know, and then it's, yeah. and I'm just like, dang, man, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty hardcore. I'd never heard the hand holding thing though. Yeah. That's, that, that's a trip, man. I never heard that. Yeah. So, how much does your experience from being in the war, how, how much or, or what kind of skills transferred from that into what you do now as a, as a police officer? Uh, that's tough. I think the biggest thing, like uh, when we went to, went to Iraq, it was pretty like harsh conditions. We went in, we were the first push. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we didn't have toilets. We, we had to burn our own poo. Uh, you know, we weren't taking showers. We were baby wiping. The biggest thing that I got from the military is that also kind of with growing up in Chicago is they gave me this. Mm-hmm. I've been in the shit, right? I've been, like, in the worst living conditions you po- possibly can be in. And if I can deal right. with that and, and persevere through that, then I can push forward. So at times, you know, when I was in the police academy, you know, people were like, oh, man, this is hard. This is hard. I was like, man. And I, you know, a couple of guys in my academy got mad and I was like, man, this ain't shit. Me and a couple of Marines, right. you know, we were like, man, this is shit. This is easy, you know. And so that, like, once you've been in it, kind of, kind of like you, you've been in such a, you were in a, a hell, right? And so once you right. go to hell and you survive, it kind of makes you, yeah, it, it scars you a little bit, but it also makes you tough because you're kind of like, man, this is it. You know, I, I tell people, yeah. I'm not digging holes in Iraq and, you right. know, and shits in them, you know, burning my own poop, you know. And, they, and other people can't relate to that. They don't know what it's like. You know, they'll complain about anything. Oh, this sucks. This sucks. This sucks. And I'm like, nah, it's not like that. <laughs> no, I agree. It's, I tell people that one of the reasons why I'm doing what I do now and, and why I'm, you know, going through and, and being successful with stuff is because of what you're just talking about. Like I was in such a situation, you know, to where it was hellish, mm-hmm. right? But now I'm in this free, civilized world to where I can do and be whatever I want to be. Exactly. And the, the, the mentality of most people is, like you said, it's very, uh, it's very easy for them to quit. It's, mm-hmm. there, there's not a lot of fortitude with people, exactly. uh, both, both mentally and physically, right? Mm-hmm. So coming from where I come from, it's like, I'm just not taking no for an answer. You know, I'm just going to do my, do my thing and, you know, nobody's standing in my way. And I credit that to a lot to what you're talking about. It's like when you've been through a certain situation, I mean, like it's what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And now you're, now you're able to just, to just push through. So I know you're not able to similar to to a doctor with the with the HEPA yeah. stuff you, you you can't you don't want to name names or or be specific or or anything like that without doing that are is there a, a case or any particular cases that stand out in your mind and it doesn't necessarily have to be in like any type of gory or horrific way or not that's not what I'm talking about but just just something to where you've gone through and it's like, it stayed with you uh, doing work as an officer. Yeah. Usually, uh, unfortunately it's always the, uh, the kid stuff, you know, and uh, I know everyone that's universal. Everyone feels the same way about, you know, crimes against children, stuff like that. Yeah. You know? I can't, I can't say specific things, but uh, uh, when I worked at desert man, I saw like crazy stuff, you know, people, 
uh, licking the kids make sex tapes and, you know, just historical yeah. sexual abuse, you know, with children and right. things like that. Those are the things you can never forget, especially when you have kids, you have to come home and look at your kid and like, you know what, somebody had a kid, my kid's age, do this, you know. Yeah. So those are the things that stick out the most, you know. Yeah. And those, uh, I don't know if it's, I've, I've written something about this kind of, not in depth, but uh, maybe a paragraph to where I, I've said that, I don't know if it's because a lot of these dudes that were inside went through it themselves or uh, to where it sparks memories of their own, right? Mm -hmm. But those people are dealt with the in the harshest manner oh yeah i've seen when, it <laughs> when they come in yeah oh yeah I, i'm yeah. sure you have i mean i tell people that and and it's not something that i'm sympathizing with or anything but i tell people that the worst crimes against humanity that i've ever seen in my life were child molesters getting dealt with mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah i mean they people get creative yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they get, yeah they get creative and that's you know it's kind of cool that i'm able to sit here and talk we're able to talk like this uh essentially being from you know a different side of the fence right now the everyday people okay that that maybe don't know or could be like maybe the kids that you haven't talked to yet that are maybe maybe they got a gang bang an older brother or something like mm -hmm. that, you know, if they were to see this, what would you want them to know about police officers that maybe they have a misconception of, or maybe that you just want them to know, like, Hey, it's like this, like, like, what would that be? Yeah. Well, I, to do that, I have to do a little bit, a little bit of a background. Like I said, I, I said earlier, I'm from Chicago from the West side. The thing, uh, well, advantage I always had is I, I come from the hood. So like a lot of when I'm when I was working the streets dealing with game bangers and things, it was like kind of like dealing with my cousin, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and also my father, he's been in state prison like several times. You know, I easily oh, could have okay. taken the other path, but uh, luckily gotcha. I chose the I chose the, I chose a different path. So like so I have an understanding when I see people, you know, young men. And, and they may be kind of going straight. I'm like, you know what? That was me at one point in time. That was me at 15, 16 years old before somebody kind of grabbed me and, and straightened me out. So uh, my, my thing to them, I, I tell people, be the change you want to become. You, if you want change, you got to become it. Like you're young and you feel this way. If you want to be, if you don't like the police that police your neighborhood, become a cop. So you can be the kind of cop that you want to, you want to roll into your house. I have a lot of people say, man, you're, you're, you're the cool cop. You're the good cop. I've had this happen in, in neighborhoods. I rolled up in apartment complexes, which is nothing but gangsters. And somebody right. starts tripping. And one of the other gangsters said, nah, right. man, chill. That's Roy. He's good. It's cool. You know, he, he, yeah. he's going to do his job. He ain't trying to dirty you. He ain't trying to, you know, he's not going to, you know, get fired with you. Just, just listen to what he got to say. Be that guy. You know, be the guy yeah. who responds and they're like, okay, I know he's got to do his job. Like, I got a job to do. You got a job to do. But he's yeah. not going to demean me. He's not going to talk down to me. He's not going to, you know, take it to the to another level. So, right. You know, that guy. And, it, and it's just a job with us. We, we want to go home at the end of the day. So right. we're trying to just make sure I'm safe, you're safe, we're safe. And, and, and it's like that. And if you got an asshole, you know, I say it's a way you handle an asshole. Don't try to fight him on the street. Right. You know, because yeah. it's, it's a lose-lose, you know. Whether you win, eventually you win, you're gonna lose. So if you got a problem right. with a police officer, document it. Like the, those of us who are legit, we don't care, record me, document me, photograph me, I don't care. If, yeah. if the file ones don't want you to record, record them. And if it's an issue, go go file a complaint. If they don't listen, then you know, take it up higher. You know. If those of us yeah. who are legit, we don't care, you know, because I'm not out here trying to hurt people. I'm just trying to do my job and protect the community. Totally makes sense too. Like, I mean, hey, I ain't got nothing to hide. Yeah. You want to take me? You want to you write something on me? Go for it. Go for and it. For, yeah, go for, for, for those uh, For those young men that are watching out here, and I say young men because I'm pretty sure that I don't have a female constituency. <laughs> if I do, it's probably like one or two, right? <laughs> <laughs> for, 
they're listening in the background as, as their boyfriend's watching. No, uh, but when you talk about be the change you want to be, right? For, for you young guys that are watching, that's not only just for this situation that he's talking about to where it's like, oh, I, I don't like the cops, so I'm going to become a cop or whatever. That's your whole life because ultimately the type of reality that you choose to be and choose to put out there, that's what other people are going to perceive. So like Roy's talking about, he goes up into a, into, let's say, apartment complex full of gangbangers, right? If he's got to deal with somebody and that person is like, you know, officer, excuse me, but I need to talk to you about this or that or whatever. Roy's going to be a lot more receptive to that dude to where he's like, hey, fuck you, dude, you know, fuck you. He starts throwing up gang signs at him and shit like that. So mm -hmm. it's what you decide to put out there that other people are going to respond to and take take back. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Your attitude yeah. it means it means everything, you know. Like I, I have had people come get wild and I'm like, hey man, am, am I calm? Like, yeah, okay, you be calm, dude. Let's just talk. You know, but yeah. but a lot of that it just comes from just just personality. Every cop is different. Not everyone's gonna have my background. You know, you're gonna have some guy, right. you know, they're not gonna be from the hood, they're not gonna be cool, they're not gonna be calm. You know, some people may come your own ten, their own ten. So I tell people that you may not get me. So the best bet for you to do is, you know, be calm, be chill, try to explain yourself, you know. Some, it's just like anything. Everybody has different personalities, you know. Like I see myself as more than a cop, you know. <laughs> like I'm a licensed right. rep. I don't, I, you know, I do, I'm, I do law enforcement because I like it, not because I have to, right. you know. And, right. uh, and it, it's kind of like that, you know. It's not my whole being. So maybe that's why I have that perspective, you know. Yeah, that and you have the understanding. So yeah. some people, they they don't get the understanding until it's either forced on them or pushed on them somehow. Uh, for example, with me, I was uh, a white kid from Orange County that liked to go to the beach a lot, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I got dropped into the prison scene, um, while I may have had some some prior experience with, with criminal elements of, let's say my own, uh, ethnicity. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I never had to deal with gangbangers up close and personal like that. And not just like, not just the brothers, you know, you got, you got the, the Mexicans, the okay. Paisas, and you got yeah. a bunch of different Mexicans cause they, they've split into like four or yeah. five different factions, yeah, you know, so outside of Paisas, yeah. right. All, all that stuff, man. So, I wasn't used to that. However, now, right, it's nothing to me. You know, the last half when I when I quit when I decided to quit running with those the, the, with the whites in there, uh, the last half of of my experience, I was talking and befriending and cool with a lot of these dudes to where it was just so. A lot of times, especially, I could say I probably from from maybe maybe if somebody if it's a white officer or something like that they don't understand that because they've never had to be into it. Mm -hmm. They've never had that put on them because of mm -hmm. where they came from. Right. Like you said, not everybody's a cool cop from the hood, you know, okay. have you, have you seen instances to where I'm sure you have to, to where you could tell that a certain officer maybe wasn't relating with oh, yeah. either a suspect or with whatever, and it was going to go bad. Yeah, yeah, I've done that plenty of times, and I'll just step in. It's almost kind of like, yeah. like like a Jedi mind trick. You can see it just going south, south, and I'll come in, boom, 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 say this, dude, boom, boom. Everything's done. Yeah, you know that's cool. And, and it's because they, it's, it's honestly just because they, and there's no, it's not a knock to them. It's just that they can't relate. You know, I think the strength I have, like I said, I can go play basketball with the kids. You used to see these kids. These are the kids. It's like twelve o'clock <laughs> at night on Friday. And these kids are hood. They walking up, they're giving me hugs, they're giving me pounds, you know, yeah. <laughs> they got my phone number. I got yeah. kids that are on probation that have my phone. They text me, hey, I need, oh, yeah. I need a device. Do yeah. this, do this. Uh, we we have kids that uh, we got them to explore programs. They were like on that fence, they get jobs. Mm -hmm. So it's, you have to actually care about people. And you know how it is, people are real. They can feel if you're real or not, you know, if you care for them, you know, when I talk to these kids, yeah. I'm speaking, like like you said about opening up, the biggest thing that probably 
progress I made in my career is when I opened up. I used to hide the fact that I was from the hood, the, the, you know, my gangsters are my family, and I easily could have right. been I used to, you know, no, no, I was in the military. And I was like, you know what, dude? I'm going to open up to these kids. I started talking to these kids, and you should see their face. And they're like, man, you don't know what it's like. And I'm like, from the west side of Chicago. I'm from Austin. Go Google yeah. Austin right now. They lead the lead Chicago and murders. My neighborhood where I grew up. That's where I grew up. Yeah. This is what I seen when I grew up. And it, and it hits them differently because they can't say, oh, you don't know. Like, I know exactly what it's like when you walk down the street and asking you where you're from. And you got yeah. to, and, and your answer would depends on your safety, you know, whether or not you live yeah. in your you get jumped. Like, I know what that's like. They may not know what that's like, so you can talk to me. And, and then they say, okay, you know what? Boom. I don't think right. I'm going to be anything. You're like, man, you can't. You could be anything you want to be, man. You know, and then you start, you know, trying to help them out. That was one of the biggest eye openers for me. And I know that that a lot of people don't like to admit this, even though it's totally true, because it they feel like it's too liberal or it's too whichever. But when I started befriending different people, whether they were black or Mexican or whatnot, and started like getting to know them, getting to know their family, seeing them at visiting and all that. The the socioeconomic divide between white people and like or the standard white people, right, that are mm -hmm. in the nice neighborhoods in Orange County versus where some of these people are it's huge. Yeah, so it's it's like it's, it's it's like the it's like the Grand Canyon. It is you know? to where unless you experience it or see it. Just like you were talking about when the kids go, you don't know what I'm from. You don't know where I come from. You don't know what this or that. It's hard to wrap your mind around it because you don't, even though you have these struggles or these problems, you don't have those problems. No. You don't have those struggles. You know, I didn't, I, w I didn't worry about someone when I was growing up running up on me and being like, where are you from? And putting a gun in my face. That yeah. didn't happen in my neighborhood. Yeah. You know what I mean? We just didn't have that. So it is this understanding and the ability to relate to someone that I'm sure in your position just makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. Have, have you ever worked with kids or worked with people, let's say from a community aspect, and then one day they're sitting in the back of your cruiser? Uh, the kids I work with? They're kind of too young, but like I said, I I, I dealt with uh, parents sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I dealt, yeah, I dealt with a parent one one time, you know, and uh, that that relationship is what kept things cool because he was a bit of a hothead, you know. But I had a okay, relationship cool. with him, and you know, I was able to talk it through and you know, handle it, handle, handle handle what he had to had 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 to deal with without it being some type of some type of issue. Uh, I think now. Uh, a lot of agencies, a lot of law enforcement agencies are adopting like de-escalation. They're trying to, like this approach, they're trying to get to this approach now where you want to talk a little bit more. You still have to be safe because like, you know how it is. Sometimes it, it's, it's just mm -hmm. dangerous sometimes. So you have to stay yeah. ready, but but you also right. probably need, sometimes there are situations where you can kind of talk them through instead of just going straight to the, you know. But sometimes you get these young guys that are 22, 23 years old, you know. They've been watching, uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, colors yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and things like that. Yeah, I remember when I was growing up. Even though, uh, even though it wasn't, you know, Compton or Watts, uh, I, I grew up in Anaheim mm -hmm. and and uh, went to school in Cypress and you know around that area, Los Alamitos, yeah. Cypress, Hunting, yeah. Huntington Beach, Seal yeah. Beach, and I remember these police agencies, right. When I was a kid, they were quick to put hands on you. Yeah. Like, I, I remember being, like, thrown to the ground by cops, yeah. you know, and not even, like, in just, like, you know, hey, what, hey kid, what'd you, you know, and getting through. Yeah. Same. So, Same. Yeah, Chicago, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so the, the idea of the, of the de-escalation, right, and going through maybe some of these this classes or these training, do you feel that it's – do you feel that in the effort of policing, right, of actually doing policing your job, that it's a help or a hindrance? It's a help. It's a help. And, and mainly because I've been to, like you said, I, I was in the military. Uh, 
the thing you got to remember as a cop, uh, you are not an occupying force. You are a police officer you're there to keep the peace. When you're in war, you're there to wage war on the enemies of America. Everyone you deal with in America, pretty much, for the most part, we in California, mm -hmm. are American citizens, right? So right. they have rights, they have a constitution. You, you're there, you're sworn to protect the constitution. So you have to keep that in mind when you're doing your job. Uh, I think, I think, I don't know when, maybe it was the 80s or the 90s with all the stuff that was happening in California, people kind of took more of a, we're occupying force mentality up with the riots and things yeah. like that. But yeah, we are, everyone is an American citizen, so, I think it's a good thing because the more, the quicker you are to put hands on people, you're going to get hurt. They're going to get hurt. Lawsuits look bad. It creates distrust. Now, there, now people have to understand in society, sometimes there are, there's no other way <laughs> to take someone right. in custody that doesn't want to be in the custody. Let's say this guy committed murder. And he's like, ah, oh, you're not going to handcuff me. Well, and he, right. he balls up his fist and blades his feet. And you got to do what you got to do. You know, he just murdered someone. Right. You're not going to let them all free because you don't want to use force. So there's always a balance, right. but you know, like I, like you said, as a kid, I remember as a kid, I was, I was, I grew up in Chicago, right? And I, I just walked down the right. street, and they, they were like, uh, they grabbed me, threw me against the wall, and say, "What are you doing over here?" And I'm like, I'm walking home from school. Well, this is a drug area. I'm like, sir, this every every block yeah. on the west side, every, <laughs> every street is a drug area, you know. So yeah. uh, you know, I know, I know how that felt as a kid because my uncle was a cop. And you know, I would go, what, okay. what, what's up, dude? I'm walking down the street, me and my friend, they just throw us against the wall. You know, that's a bad, that's, you can't do that. That's not right, you know, to a 13 year old. Oh, kid. no. Oh, and I remember like getting thrown down on the ground, man. Like, I mean, just yeah. like having the, and, like this big man, you know, man, because I'm yeah. still like a essentially a kid, just, you know, and it's just like, yeah. oh my God, what? Is, yeah, so I. Yeah. So for me, yeah, I don't want to be that guy, you <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. I know what it's like. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I and I don't want to be that guy either. And I'm yeah. not even a cop. I just don't want to be the guy that I like to let people live their life, you know, as long as they're not hurting others or, or coming up off of others in some way, you know, just live and let live. You, you just said, mentioned that your uncle's a cop, right? Is this uncle your dad's brother? Uh, my, uh, he's my great grand, my great uncle, if you will. It's my grandmother's brother. Oh. He's, he's been long oh, okay. retired. Oh, okay. No, the reason why I was asking is because with your dad, you had mentioned that, you know, he's been in prison a couple times or a few mm -hmm. times or whatever. Um, how is, how is your guys' relationship? I mean, does it, it, does it, do you feel like, um, like it's something that's still a part of him or it's a barrier or is it just like, it doesn't come up and it's old news or, I mean, how does that work? It doesn't, it doesn't awesome. come up. It doesn't come up like your yeah. father, you know, your father's still your father, you know. Like yeah, he right. doesn't look at it like, oh, my son became it. He's actually proud, proud, pr pretty Good. much proud of it, you know. So and then Good. it's it's kind of weird because I have family, I have cousins that are cops and you know, cousins that are, <laughs> that are gangsters. It's, it's kind of just kind of yeah. it is what it is. Everyone kind of knows their role. We're still family, but you know, you chose a different path, I chose a different path. Like I tell people. All the time, I still can go where I grew up at. You know, on the west side, I still can right. go around there, no problem. You know, it's it, you right. know, this is this is a job. This is what I do for a living. And, and, you know, friends are friends, and yeah. family, family. You know, yeah, and that's. I mean, that makes sense. The reason why why I ask, and obviously, and I say this, okay, I think that the profession of a police officer is an honorable. I think it's probably one of the most honorable ones. It's like being like one of the knights of old, you know, like yeah. you're, you're, you're sworn to protect the people. I've always thought that from a kid. And even though I've been to the joint, I still feel like that. Believe it or not. I mean, I do. The thing that messes it up is some of the guys that are wearing the badge. It's yeah. not, it's not the, the deal of, you know, being a cop uh, or, or, or the, the, the job, so to speak. It's, the person who's deciding to enforce it that can yeah. really kind of wreck it or make make the bad day yeah. for someone. Yeah, like I tell people, we're yeah. all we're all individuals. You know, everybody's different. Some people are more like you know, and unfortunately, that's kind of the thing. Like we see it, you know, we see the news. You know, we'll be sitting there, we get the. Did you see this? Did you see what this guy in Oklahoma yeah. did? You know, now I got to yeah. go out and, you know, explain why he did this. And you see the guys in Florida, did like, what were they thinking? You know, 
and now we have to go out and, and, and that's the thing with our job is that it can be somebody on another side in a different country in a, in a different right. country that does something stupid right and then guess who's getting the heat for it right we are and, and it's crazy that we're like the one of the only professions where, where it happens like that you know if a journalist does something you know it's just on that journalist with us you know we have to answer for the sins of like every person right wore the uniform right. that comes with the territory you know, it's almost similar. Uh, I did this this interview with uh, with Abu American. I, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, he, who he yeah. is on there. Okay, cool. So we talked about religion, about faith. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about Islam and Christianity, and it's almost kind of similar to what we were talking about. You have these radicals in Islam, yeah. you know, that are mm -hmm. doing the suicide blow up thing. And then in, I'm, I'm Catholic, so in, in Catholicism, you got these priests that are doing bad things with kids. Mm -hmm. And it's like, like you're saying, you have to answer for the sins. It's like, oh, you're Catholic? You're part of that, you know, kitty raping, exactly. blah, 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 blah. And you're just like, oh, my God, man. You know, it's like, uh, same kind of deal, almost, to where it's, you're being held accountable for the sins of people you've never even met in your life. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, that's... And some of it is understandable because uh, we hold, you're a police, like you said, you're like a knight, you're a police officer. You can do, you have so much corporal authority and, you know, to, to do things. So when someone breaches that trust, it, 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 it yeah. sours the entire profession. You know, we have access to people's public information. We can carry guns everywhere. We don't people yeah. that can have like fully on automatic weapons. So when you see cops, like, I think I saw Anson in uh, Florida. Well, these guys came out and they were just spraying like maniacs, right? And I'm like, and I'm watching it. And I'm like, this is horrible. But that's now that's yeah, something. Yeah. There were there were police that were yeah. doing that. Yeah, oh, wow. probably technically oh, wow. we don't people that got the fully auto. So now I'm already looking at the floor, like, okay, now we're going to be under scrutiny uh, for having automatic weapons, like uh, the tactical teams. And we don't, you're not even supposed to really use it. Like if you use an automatic weapon, you're like it's like doomsday. <laughs> you shouldn't be, you know. Yeah. You know using but they did it they're on tape and now i'm like okay now that's something else i'm gonna have to <laughs> people are gonna you know my cousin God. takes me did you see what happened in florida did you see you know, yeah it's one of those yeah. deals <laughs> it never stops that's crazy man it never stops. If, yeah and it doesn't i mean one of the things that one of the things that i remember from from being on the inside right was there's a huge distrust factor coming from both ends, mm -hmm. right? So, so the, the cops thought that all the cons were pieces of lying pieces of shit. You know, I mean, that's just what it was. Right. And the cons thought that all the cops were lying pieces of shit that were going to try and get them twisted up. Right. We already talked about how you're received pretty well with your community and with what you do. Do you still see, maybe not so much with you, but but maybe even with your fellow officers or whatever, do you see a lot of distrust towards the police still, or is it more, is it less, or sh should I say? I mean, do you see, what's the level that you see there? I mean, it, it, do people generally tend to uh, be forward and kind of whatever, or is there, do you feel like the climate right now in California is like there's a lot of distrust against the cops? Well, it, like law enforcement is like, just like anything, it's real local. Where I currently work, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say exactly where I work, but we have mm -hmm. a pretty good relationship with our community because uh, cause of guys like me and the stuff that we do, we do a lot of stuff for the community. It's a rich area sure. and it's kind of a poor area, but we do a lot of activity in the poor area. We give a lot of toys away. We, you know, we do a lot of community events. Uh, in some areas, uh, Maybe where it's rougher, probably like places like Compton, San Bernardino, you know, where, yeah. the, where the officers are like, they're so inundated with call. They want to call, 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 call. Mm -hmm. They don't have that time and opportunity to stop and uh, interact with the community. So a lot of times that's what it is, is that the officers come to work, you know, they, they log on and the screen is just loaded. It's like 100 calls, you know. So-and-so called in sick, so-and-so's hurt, you know, the city didn't approve for these positions, so you're down three bodies. So they come in and the work is just going, call, 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 call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
call. And they're just trying to clear this call so they can go to the next one. So they lose that interpersonal connection to maybe stop and, and, and talk to the kid or play basketball. Take a moment. Yeah, take a moment. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and, and, th and that's, that's understandable. They don't have time. Yeah. I mean, I know how it is living in Southern. I, I was just down there. I, I got a buddy that, that still lives and watch. We've been friends for a long time. Excuse me. He was born and raised down there. And it was funny because we went out. So there was this war room event, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we went out and, and, and I wanted to show him because he's not a member, but I was just like, hey, there's a thing going on. Come with me. I'll come and show you what it is, you know? And we ended up hanging out and it was probably about 2.33 in the morning where he's like, all right, take me back, right? Because I had driven him. So I'm driving like at three in the morning in Watts, right? Oh, and he's asleep. Yeah, and, and he passed out in the car, right? And, and um, I don't know Watts that well, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't. So I'm like, uh, Ken, where are we, right? And he's like, you know, he wakes up. He had a little drink, you know, we both did. And he's like, oh, turn down that street right there. And I'm like, and I see it, it's a Grape Street. And I'm like, <laughs> I go, is that the Grape Street? And he's like, yup, don't look at anyone. And I was like, word, you know, and I'm just like, just drive through, you know, because it's like, I know how those, I, I grew up with that. Like when yeah. I was a kid, and I t I've told this to Ken too, like they would tell, like if you were being a white kid or whatever, it was known like, do not go to Watts. Yeah. Do not go to Compton. You know, like just don't do it. You're this gonna be, you're gonna be in trouble. Dangerous, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you're gonna be in trouble down there if you do. So, I can understand about not getting that time to to connect and and to. I mean, it's just got to be crazy sometimes, man. Yeah, I think that's. I think if uh, if, if 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 the local whatever local sees uh, that I have an issue. We don't have we don't have a lot of issues where we where I work because we connect with the community. It stops a lot of stuff. Yeah. Even with the like I said, even with the gangsters, there's a level of mutual respect. You know, right? Like, okay, you know, they know we're not you know out you know running around just just beating people up and things like that. So there's right. a level of respect, and we have and, and a lot of guys these these guys you know from when they were kids. If, if you connect with the community, yeah. you met them at the the basketball courts and things like that. So now when they're you know, they take the wrong path and they're 18. Well, you knew him since he was 10. He's going to deal with you a little bit different than he would. Yeah. You know, if he, he doesn't know who yeah, you that's... are. You know, you're going to be like, hey, what's up, Johnny? Remember me? Yeah, I, mean, I remember you. Remember that time? Blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah. You know. Yeah. So, and, and then I think that's the problem with the American policing. And it, you see it now. Like, I'm studying a bunch of stuff like, uh, uh, with community policing, community style policing. Agencies are trying to stop that. Like, hey, man, we're part of the community. We're, we're human beings. We're just like you. We live in the same right. way. How about we connect and we, you know, come together? And I think that'll stop a lot of uh, issues, you know. Yeah. I mean, please. No, that's great. Please, yeah. yeah, that's, that's, um, I think that when you have someone like yourself that is able to actually conceptualize and see the good that's going to come from it versus someone that's just like oh what is this some more department bullshit that i gotta learn ah oh, fuck oh then now we gotta go through this and now we got yeah. it's a whole different attitude when you have someone like yourself that's actually sees and knows what the big yeah. picture is and how that ripple in a pond can yeah you yeah. go out and save your ass even potentially yeah, yeah. one day. Because you like you, you know, said, we've, mean, been thrown, we've been thrown to the ground. Other people haven't, you know? Yeah. I remember one of my yeah. uncles, he was actually, he was he was in the game, but uh, he changed his life, you know, converted to Christianity, gave up everything. And I remember he looked at me one day and said, you know what, Roy, you should become a cop. I looked at him and I laughed. <laughs> I said, are you serious? <laughs> like, I, I, I had no passion whatsoever yeah. I was like these kids I was like I was an explorer you know I was watching TV, cop TV shows I had right. no desire whatsoever it didn't even cross my mind yeah. until I was in the military I was so far removed from where I grew up and I had other friends that became cops one of my cousins became a cop and I was like you know what maybe I can do this and then I had that in mind that I can do I can be the cool cop I'll be the guy that you know you know 
is, is, is cool, yeah. you know, is in the day, you know. So, and it, it took all that time for me to even get into that mindset. You know, when he told me that yeah. I, I was like 18, I was like, are you serious? You know, no, dude, hell no. You lost your damn mind, dude. You used to be a freaking gangster. And he's like, no, yeah. man, you need to do it to make the change. And I was like, I wasn't hearing it at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? No, that's, a lot of that, though, too, is that dudes, I mean, there's some medical evidence behind the fact that a man's frontal cortex or whatever yeah. isn't fully developed until he's around 25, which I would believe it just by the way I used yeah, to I act was, uh, when I was a youngster, you know, mm -hmm. because I tell people, I say, you know, I didn't even really grow up until I was 27 years old. I was still inside. You know, I was inside from, from 23 to 33. Well, actually, technically 32. I turned 33 a couple months later. But, yeah. you know, right around there, you know, to where that whole time. And I didn't even really start thinking of myself as like, how are you going to be a good man? How are you going to be a good guy? What are you going to do with your life? What's your purpose? All those type of feelings didn't even really hit me until I was around 26, 27 yeah. years old. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Even, even, even when I was in the military, I was still pretty wild. Uh, the military <laughs> just kind of beat it out of me. So I, I didn't become a cop until yeah. I was 25. And like I said, around 24, I kind of started. And the military just kind of helped me accelerate my maturity. Right. You know, but uh, yeah, when I first got in, I was yeah. man, I was getting in trouble. I was showing up late to formation. I was partying all the time, you know. <laughs> You know, the military, yeah. you know, they don't, you know, they'll just, okay, you can't show up at six, show up at five. Okay, you can't, you can't show up at yeah. five, show up at four. You can't show up at four, show up at three. And then go over there and uh, mm -hmm. pick those weeds with your hand, you know. And so eventually, you know, they beat it out of you and you kind of be responsible. So that's what happened. Mean. That's, prison is the same way. Um, it's not, but it's not so much the cops as it is the other inmates. One thing that I preach to people is, I had some guy ask me too, and it, it was perfect. He set it up for me perfect. He's like, what's the, what's the best skill to learn, you know, uh, as a man? He said, social skills, manners, you know, being polite. Yeah. Like that'll save your ass more yeah, than right. anything. And that's, that's one of the things when I went in, uh, when you're talking about they, you know, they beat it out of you or whatever. I, I never was in a situation to where like I got jumped by my own or anything like that because mm -hmm. I was out of line or whatever. But that being said, I was still a dumb kid that had to learn real quick because it could be my life if I didn't kind of assimilate to what was going oh, yeah. on in there. Oh, yeah. Right. So it's, it's, um, having the manners and then also like being able to go, okay, this is what we do. Or I think that that right there is the difference between a lot. Cause I I'd see guys, man, you know, how you were talking about earlier, like there's some people you just got to put hands on, mm -hmm. you know, there's just some people like, Hey, you know, all the police talking and everything in the world. No, you got to grab this dude, right. Take yeah. him into custody. Um, there were people when I was in there that the only way you would get to these people is if you punched them in the face, yeah. or you just did something to them. Like there was no, you know, let's have a civilized conversation or let's have manners or let's have whatever. No, the only thing they were going to understand, it's like a, like a donkey, I, I, I tell people. Yeah. <laughs> like you have to hit them with a stick. That's the only thing that they understood was, was getting to them. How often does that happen? More, uh, less often than not? Or, or when you have interactions with the community, you kind of talked about earlier how you are, right? but how you are and how other people are, aren't always necessarily the same. Yeah. Is that less, how often do you deal with someone to where you're just like, Oh with my me, God, man, we're going to have to do something to this with guy. With me is, is lesser. I've been doing this for 14 years. Like I said, I got, I got a little bit more oh, wow. experience. Yeah. So like yeah. me, I will say it probably just happens like once, maybe twice a year with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because uh, usually I can talk people. I usually can say, "Hey, man, this is this is the deal." Sometimes it may just be cool. Sometimes I may have to do it a little bit more aggressively. Like I'm going to tell you, this is what I'm going to do if you don't do what I right. do. And, and and also too, it's like sometimes little stuff you can you got to let slide. You know, you you can't get too yeah. far from your ego. That's the biggest thing. You can't have an ego. So mm -hmm. I don't have an ego. So 
little stuff, I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to trip off that dude. Just, you good. Right. And then when something does happen, you can talk to people and you usually can get your way. You know, it, it's kind of like, like, uh, I'm like, I'm, I'm six two with my boots on. Right. I'm a little bit tall. Yeah. I weigh about 225. Uh -huh. I got all this gear, you know, you can right. tell I'm a vet. Like, you know, you've been, you've been in the joint, you know, who, who the fish are. Right. And you know who the right. guys yeah. have been around the block. I'm the guy. That right. Oh block. yeah. It's, yeah. So I'm exactly, like, yeah. This is what I need you to do. Most people are gonna yeah. like, okay, dude, I'm this dude, I'm not gonna play games with. And then you just come across that one guy, whether it's drugs, where he's just tweaked out of his mind, or he's right. he's just uh he's just nuts. And there's nothing you can do mm -hmm. but do that. You know, I came across a guy like that. I can't say exactly where, but he was just tweaked out of his mind. I tried to reason with him, I tried to be calm, and he was like, No, nah, let's fight. And so, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, yeah. you just got to do what you got to do. But that's that rare situation because for the most part, me, I'm not trying to fight. Like, I've been doing this for too long. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to break my hand, hurt my wrist. So, for the most part with me, I'm not trying to fight you. I'm just like, hey, man, check this out. Yeah. You got a warrant. It's big enough for me to take you yeah. in. If it wasn't big enough, it was like $5,000. I'll just give you a new court date. I don't care, dude. But it's this. Right. I got to take you in. Don't make it hard. You cool? Yeah. You know, most people are like, you know what, you cool. Hey, can you take this bag yeah. over to my girlfriend's house? Sure, I do that, dude. What else you need me to do? You need some yeah. number you need to write down? So there's a there's yeah. a game. Hey, you mind if I smoke a cigarette? Okay, dude, let's pull over here. You right. know, so it's a lot of give and take in that respect. People will respect. They're right. like, okay, I know I got, I got, I make the warrant. The warrant is there. I got, you got to take care of it, man, but this is the deal. Right. We're going to make it easy for you. We're going to take you here. We're going to take you back over to your girl. You know, we're gonna let you write down your telephone numbers. Here's a cigarette. You know, what where radio stations yeah. you can listen to. And, you know, and, and that stuff goes a long way. And other people know that they won't. You know, it's cool. You know. Yeah, I had a, I had a. Uh, there's a guy that follows me on social media. That's also, I think he's retired now, but yeah, he's about law enforcement. And he was telling me that about this one time that where he had pulled someone one over and it was real late and the guy was was huge and mm -hmm. you know way bigger than he was and all that and so it was and all it was was just this guy and him right and he said but the the guy complied got in the back of the car and everything well once he ran his info uh it turns out this dude's like multiple time offender he's mm -hmm. got like assaulting police officers on his record you know like all this crazy yeah. stuff right so he said so he asked him he said once he got him down to booking you know he'd like he asked him, he said, hey, man, it was just me and you out there on that dark road. Like, like, why didn't, you know, I've I seen your record. What, what's up? You know, and he's like, well, you came at me correct, man. You, I didn't feel like I had a problem with you. You know, yeah. you came at me right, and, and that was it. And whether it's cop or whether it's, it's you know, convict, I don't think people understand just how how the right word or words can steer you out of just damage, yeah. just danger. Yeah, it does. Respect, respect goes the wall. I tell people the the the, the, goals, the biggest tool that a police officer has isn't his gun, bulletproof vest, taser. It's his mouth. It's your brain. Yeah. You know, I work the jails, and yeah. you know, I'm in the jails. I wasn't in state, but you know, you got some heavy hitters in there. Like I remember I worked a unit oh, yeah. man, and I had guy from the from A B, from BGF, from Mexican Mafia. Yeah. And and you should see the relationship that I had with them. They, you know, they, they yeah. say, uh, deputy is so and so, could you turn off my thing? Yes, sir. And I walked through and it was all yeah. it was all respect. We conversate, we talk, talk about whatever, you know. And it was just a it's right. a respect thing. And I know you've been locked up, so respect is big. Respect yeah. is big, you know. <coughs> it's <laughs> behind like the walls. I mean, like you working in the jail yeah. cell. This this me and this like twenty inmates, you know, they're on quarter tier. So it's like, you know, sixteen guys, like, you know, so I'm walking in the dorm room with myself, you know. And but they have respect because I show them respect. Even when I had to search a cell, like I would search a cell, I'm like Mr. So and so, can I search a cell? They know damn well I had every right to search that cell, but I would ask them anyway. Right. And they respected right. the fact that I asked them because I didn't even pop the cell. Open your cell, motherfucker. I'm gonna search it. You know, yeah. they know I can search your yeah. cell. Hey, Mr. Mr. Johnson, I'm gonna have you step outside. I'm gonna search your cell, and I'm not even gonna trash it. Like I'm gonna try to leave it yeah. cool. And I'm like, this is their oh, house. Yeah, this is their house. You knew, 
there, yeah. there were there were CEOs there were CEOs when I was in there, man. And they not only would they trash it, right? Like just like yeah, boom, I know. Just, like, being thrown everywhere. But then you see their boot marks all over everything. So like the 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 bed that you're supposed to sleep on that night, like the, mm -hmm. the sheets just got all the yeah. boot marks on it, and you're just like, oh, you fuck. yeah. But see, you know, not where but, nothing happened in my units, right? Yeah. If somebody got jumped. It wasn't yeah. on my watch. <laughs> Yeah. Right? <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah, they were they were keeping it off of you. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's keep keep the paperwork off you. Did you? I I don't know if you're going to be able to answer this, but I, I'm only asking because I saw this when I was upstate. Yeah. You ever see, uh, like like an officer? You ever see? Okay, for example, you seen that movie End of Watch? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. You know, how there's that scene where the cops like, oh, you want, you know, because the guy's telling them, hey, I'll fuck you up right now. And the cops like, oh, you want to get down? And he takes off his belt. And he's like, let's handle this. You know, you ever see anything like that in real life? Like, uh, like ever? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, I because because I I saw that when I was upstate, and 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 that that was a thing that that tripped me out. You know, because I'm like man, this just seems like it could be trouble so many different ways. Yeah, and like for the be. dude, yeah, and, and for the dude, uh, for, for the, the, the inmate or the convict or whatever, uh, it's, a, it's like a lose-lose. Yeah, it is. You know, like, you, like you, you get beat up by the cop, and if you win, you know, you're getting more charges or you're getting whatever, you know, to where... But you can get trouble right as a there. cop, too, if they found out that you... Oh, yeah. You took off your uniform. You challenged somebody to a fight. You can, yeah, you can get. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure you can. Yeah, I mean, that, it's. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, Not it's um. <laughs> well, here's here's what, and and I I know that we've been we've been talking a long time. It's been over an hour already, and I won't take up too much more. Um. One of the things that I saw, because we're you were talking earlier about like, hey, it's a job. You know, we, we come in, we're, we're people too, we're whichever, and we, we mm -hmm. want to go home, get our paycheck. There were COs like that too. There were, you know, to where you knew it was just like, oh, it's a job, right? But then there were COs that like really thought they were playing the game. Like they get, like they knew who the heavy hitters were and they'd like have the talk like, hey, yo, homie, do, 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 do. Or like they, they thought like they were playing like some, some like halfway gangster game. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you you get those, or you had experience with that? Too? I, 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 yeah, I've had I've had experience, and mainly is uh either either you may get somebody like that's really from the hood, and so they just they still kind of got that swagger about them, and then you got some who think they you know the game. I've seen guys do that, and I kind of chuckle because I'm really yeah. from the hood, and you know, so right. <laughs> I'm just like okay, you know. <laughs> yeah, because I used to I used to have like, well, I mean, not a lot, but it in the beginning. Like I had uh, CEOs hit me up about like, hey man, there's this dude that we don't like. Do, 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 do. Take care of him, and we'll oh, give wow. you a TV or you know, take care. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh wow! Oh yeah! Like trying to like like telling me straight up, and then like when I'd be like, nah, I'm good, you know, because I'm not gonna no. do their dirty work and then get a charge on top of it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because they ain't gonna like, you know, if something happens, they're not gonna oh, be you know, oh, good yeah. towards me. No. Yeah, we didn't know nothing. <laughs> so, um, but, but yeah, that, that happened a, a few times, man, to where there was, it was like, they, they thought that they were somehow, man, I've seen COs. I shit you not, dude. You know how, how they have the homemade guns in there, the inmates, you know, yeah. they, they, they usually, and for yeah. those of you that are watching, this is how it goes down. They take apart like a, like an old cassette tape mm -hmm. or something like that. And there's a motor in there. Okay. Um, you you take the motor, you put it sideways, and you make from a pen uh, the kind the the barrel essentially. Mm -hmm. You get a guitar string, uh, usually it's the big E guitar string, and you unwind it to get that core metal that's in there because apparently that's the best size needle. And they just attach that thing. You got now you put batteries on it, and you've got a tattoo gun. So for all you that. Don't know how they do it in prison. I just explained it to you. Okay, there's <laughs> there's how you make a tattoo gun. But I've seen uh, COs getting tatted by fucking inmates. That's crazy. Totally crazy, man. I've seen I, I saw a female CO getting tatted by inmates too. And I'm thinking to myself, like, really, you feel that comfortable right now, huh? 
because like in reality you know there's a lot of convicts around there to where like they may not be saying nothing or but in their mind they're just like fuck you you know like like i don't want this dude here or, or you know they got bad feelings right but i've seen it to where it's like they feel like they're so so much in the game man like i've seen them getting tatted and shit no, that's like crazy, crazy. yeah that's crazy, that's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy man crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no it is man i mean even like thinking back on it like they they would do different stuff like that you know and and they they get at you a a and then like the the cool ones the smart ones they'll refer to you by like your last name a lot of them We'll, we'll call you Mr. or Sir. The, those are the ones that you know have worked the higher levels and have respect. When they walk up, they've got like their hands behind their back or at their mm -hmm. side, you know, like they're, they give you that space, you know, and yeah. you can tell like, oh, this dude's been on a level four. Like, you know, oh, yeah, you can, yeah, you can tell the level four. Because I worked in a, you know, yeah. the guys are level four, they walk up to you, hey, you know, do so, Mr. Williamson, blah, 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 you know, and all that. Yeah. So, yeah, you can tell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but these these other guys, man, like that, that stuff would, would definitely trip me out. And, and, uh, it's a fine line, you know, people, they, yeah. they want to, um, experience kind of like that both deal. And it's almost the mentality. It seems that you have to have being a cop versus being a criminal. It's very similar. Yeah. I was going to touch on that. Uh, they, they have studies where they say, well, the cop, and the criminal mindset is, is very, it's, it's kind of similar. Uh, one, of, one of the guys I like to read, his name, uh, you may have heard of him, his name is uh, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman. He's a retired Army guy. He wrote, he wrote this book called On Killing. He described the, uh, the, the kind of, the three categories. He said, there are sheep. These are the normal people in society who, who don't, don't hurt people. They just go to work, pay taxes. There are sheep dogs. Those are the police officers. And, and soldiers, they have the capacity of violence, but use that capacity of violence to protect people. And then there are the wolves who usually prey on the sheep. And so the wolf right. and the sheep dog are very similar. So we both have the ability right. to, you know, to, to do harm to other people. And, and we can separate that from just from anything else. Sheep can't hurt people. But the wolf uses right. their capacity for violence to, to prey on the sheep. And so the sheep dog's role is to use their capacity of violence to protect the sheep from the, from the wolf. Right. So that mentality is very similar. So you see, that's why sometimes it kind of it kind of blends. Like you said, I'm I'm from the hood. I could easily mm -hmm. turned out to be some <laughs> some gangster in Chicago, but I turned yeah. out to become a cop and a soldier. So you know, because and part of it is because of my conscience. Like I remember growing up in the hood. Like they 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 were put. They were like that kid right there has heart. And I remember them saying, but he only has it to protect himself or his friends. Like I never had the, mm -hmm. the ability to be offensive. I would only yeah. fight, but if you if you touch one of my friends, it was on. But I wouldn't. You couldn't tell me, "Hey, Roy, go do this." I'm like, "Why? What did he right. do?" To me? <laughs> right. You know, that was me. Like, right. he didn't do anything to me. You know. But now, if you come and beat up my friend, then yeah, it was on. I would give you hell. You know. And that's one thing, like with my situational awareness course that mm -hmm. I have. And by the way, anybody that's watching, link in bio on all all the <laughs> stuff. No, uh, my my situational awareness course. Uh, it is something that I kind of cr that I created to address some of those to address along those lines yeah. because what people don't understand is that even though they may like let's say have some type of capacity for violence right mm -hmm. like let's say they're not going to let something happen to their wife yeah. or, or their family you know they're, they're going to whichever what they don't understand is that criminals have confidence through experience when it comes to committing crimes and hurting people. So those are the people that can walk right up on you and just punch you upside your head and like keep doing it while you're just trying to figure out what the hell's going on because you're a sheep. You know yep. what I mean? Like I you don't even know what's happening and, and you're already yep. just getting the crap kicked out of you, right? So the situational awareness in, in that, I mean, I as a cop, I can only imagine, uh, you know, it's, it's on 10 all the time. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what a lot of people don't understand yeah. when it comes to like the criminal mindset is that these guys don't have a problem hurting you. No, no. It, it, like, you know, uh, I, I remember I was talking, I was working in jails and I'm talking to a young guy and I'm like, what you in for, man? We just talking, you know, he's a worker. I'm in for stealing a car. So, you know, you know, you build rapport and you, you know, you tell him, you like, 
dude, what the hell, dude? What the hell you stole a car for? You're like 19 years old. He's like, well, man, I was walking down the street and these people just let their car run in. So I just hopped in it and I drove to Fresno. <laughs> you <know? laughs> so you got some soccer mom, you know, like I'll see my neighbors and like, why are you leaving your car running with the, you know, with, with yeah. the key to the ignition? Well, this is a nice neighborhood. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. What do you think they come steal? Yeah. You don't have an alarm? Right. Do you have cameras? You know, do you have lights on? Do you have the neighbors come checking? Why are you tell me you're right out of town? You know, it's all that stuff like why well, I'm thinking, they're not thinking, you know, why yeah. is your person in front passenger seat? You know, well, this is right. a nice area. Okay. All it takes is some fool to walk by, smash, grab, you know, your purse is gone. Yeah. All your credit cards are gone. They sold it on the black market. They stole your identity, you know. <laughs> all that. Yeah. All that. It's, just like that. It's the and, and the capacity for, for these people to do it is just it, it, it's easy. It's, it's oh, there. He, there he is. Is that your boy? <laughs> that's okay. I see. Uh, uh, that, that's the cue that we that we that, that we've been on for a minute. Yeah, I told you. Come in here. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's okay. Okay, so now now that we'll we'll finish up. Okay, uh, and it's okay. always no problem. I I have a daughter and a dog and yeah. all of the types of distractions. So it's, I I promise it's all right. Okay. <laughs> He's like, that's enough. Man. Just hang out, kiddo. Okay, so so in closing, and I ask, I like to ask this with a lot of different guests, but I think in your situation and and in your profession, this is something that maybe has a little bit more poignancy. If there were any type of mis misconception or or something or some subject you want to clear up as a police officer with just the regular Joe public or just something you'd want them to know, right? What would it be? Uh, about police officers is that uh, the vast majority, I mean like 99% of people that get into this. Oh, no. I'm so hey. <laughs> He's all good. Uh, he's, that, he's all good. Yeah, he's a uh, that they, they want to do the right thing, regardless of how, you know, if the job sours and later on down the road, you come get it or whatever. When they start this job, they want to do the right thing. When people are in, like in the academy, they like being the law enforcement court of ethics, true blue, deep down in our, they want to do something good and, and, and have a positive influence. You know, sometimes along the way, you know, life happens, you get bitter about the job, things like that, politics. They can't do that job. Like, you know, we're right now, we're in California right now. The laws in California are just like horrible, you know? Yeah. You know, that's why we have, you know, all this homelessness and just vagrancy. And so like, that's something that personally me, I'm dealing with right now is that I almost feel like I can't do my job, you know, which is, right. you know, which is a whole nother topic in itself, but uh, they want to do the right thing. You know, they, they, they have good intentions. Some of it's misguided, some of it's because of the individual, some of it's become a culture in their department, administrators, for various reasons. And, uh, but that's the one thing, <laughs> we brought the dog in. One thing I wanted to say, oh, anyone, most people that start off in this job, they have good intentions. No, and I, and I believe that too. Yeah. Hey, Roy, thank you for coming on. And for anyone that's, uh, you were talking about, you have a podcast that's coming up. Do, do you want to, is there anything you want to say uh, with that? You're going to be part of a podcast yes, here soon? Yes. Uh, one of my, one of my, uh, one of my partners is uh, starting a podcast called Black and Blue. He's actually uh, okay. talking about being African American and being in law enforcement profession. Because I know a lot of people in my community have issues yeah. with, yeah. with police officers. And so what, and, and so he's kind of like me with the, how we take our approach to policing. We want to okay. bridge that gap and be kind of like a bridge, you know, to, to, to you know, everyone has these negative uh, views about police. We want to help men that, you know, try to try to create something different, you know, going forward. So, but it's not just for black people, obviously we're going to, because it's not that many black people that are, that are cops. So we're going to celebrate right. you, but we're going to be talking to different people uh, about law enforcement, you know, and things like that. So okay. it's called cool. black. And when, when is that going to, when is that going to be available? Do you think? Uh, should be in February. We're gonna, we're gonna, we got, we we lined up everything right now, so uh, it's gonna be on all all platforms. Cool. Uh, so, well, be be sure. Uh, I'm, you know, we follow each other, and we know. Be sure to to let me know when it's going on, and I'll help promote it. You know, definitely, definitely, we'll, we'll get it out there and, and do it. 
Okay, so thank you everyone for tuning in. Uh, we've been speaking with Roy Williamson, who is a law enforcement officer and SWAT officer. Roy, thank you for taking the time. And for everyone else that's uh, still out there watching, stay safe out there.